Nothing happens until demand zones get confirmed and nothing happens to the upside until supply zones get confirmed as well. And if you look at today's setups versus yesterday's setups kind of going into today's session, it's night and day. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. And just like that, the world is good again. Guys, good evening, everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessOfTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. So let's kind of back up uh, 24 hours. Um, I had a very, very specific plan today. Um, again, big disconnect, a lot of beta names uh, to the overall market strength, especially uh, in the small cap space. We, we, we've kind of been noticing that for you know several weeks. And I wanted to give every opportunity for the market to kind of play itself out today. And even though um, the market didn't do, all these, these stocks didn't do what I thought they were gonna do, at least it's showing there's, there's definitely growth involved as far as being a trader. If this was 15, 20 years ago, I would have been shorting these stocks on anticipation of the move, trying to forecast that this was gonna happen. And 15, 20 years ago, I would have gotten absolutely killed. And this is why we always say every single day, again, have a plan, right? Have an opinion, have a bias, but that bias is only a setup until it confirms. And for a while there, Tate, for the first two, three hours, we started seeing really good uh, small cap and mid cap action move uh, to the upside, kind of what we talked about in the video. Um, I believed going into this week, we were going to see weakness in beta to start the week and strength in everything else. And that's the way everything played out. But again, this is why we wait for things to confirm. I was watching all these stocks this morning and I wanted to give uh, the sellers the benefit of the doubt. And if you traded the market this morning, you saw Apple, right? Apple got very, very weak and never got below Friday's range. Amazon got very, very weak, went red several times, right? Never got below, never got below Friday's range. Square actually got hit at some point, right? But you could see these really, really big areas of weakness all over again. I said, well, if they're not going to go today, they're definitely, right? They're definitely going to go to tomorrow. Same thing with Microsoft. Microsoft got to the bottom of Friday's range and never confirmed. And it really does show you how strong this market is. It's the most amazing part. And again, it really does show you how, how really patient you have to be and kind of let your process work out and have it, let your plan work out. Because if you don't, then you, again, you try to anticipate, you're going to get run over. And again, you got to give the bulls a, a phenomenal kudos. They could have easily, easily gave up this bottom range here and went down to this 305 level that we talked about. But again, they didn't. And that is why this is the most hated bull market probably ever. Because again, they're always trying to reach for things. They're trying to talk about inauguration, the COVID, everything, everything, including the kitchen sink uh, to make the sell-off finally a reality. Unfortunately, though, before a sell-off starts into and plays into, into fruition, demand zones need to be confirmed. We talked about that uh, over the weekend. Nothing happens until demand zones get confirmed and nothing happens to the upside until supply zones get confirmed as well. And if you look at today's setups versus yesterday's setups kind of going into today's session, it's night and day. You could have made a huge argument around 10, 11 o'clock in the morning that we were a day away, you know, didn't come today, but we were a day away from really big technical breakdowns. And I said, you know what? Let me take some cash flow today on the upside on a couple of things that look pretty decent and let's leave everything alone. We're only a day away because God knows what's going to happen with Netflix. And again, Netflix came, Netflix went, huge move after hours of 13% subscriber growth. Uh, I believe they talked about a possible buyback. Does this finally kind of pull up beta? You know, I don't know, but I, I tell you, we definitely went from uh, the outhouse, not saying necessarily to the penthouse, but the market did, the Qs did reclaim uh, the five, 10 day moving average again, which is incredibly bullish. And if you go through kind of the Qs today, members of the Qs, names like Google, right? Google looks really good, right? Maybe one more day to confirm. I know, that, I know there's gonna be a big, uh, big earnings for next week on a lot of these names, but Netflix kicked off earnings season. Maybe Google, if it confirms today's prices, look at ZM, right? Maybe ZM 
reclaims the 50-day moving average, maybe a stock uh, like FSLY, okay, uh, took out Friday's, this whole, so, whole section from last week's supply, highest close, maybe it continues into the hundreds. So there's definitely a lot of uh, possibilities going into tomorrow's session. Even if you look at, for example, the smaller names, they have nothing to do with beta, some good looking charts for tomorrow. You have INSG, maybe a day away. You have uh, XPEV that had a really, really big move, right? A Chinese EV name got rejected three times in the same area. And again, who knows? Maybe this thing reclaims and explodes tomorrow. You have names like cyber, right? You have cyber security. You, all eyes going to be on the inauguration tomorrow. Who knows what's going to happen, right? Uh, this stock looks like maybe a day away. So slowly but surely, one day can make such a big difference in sentiment, but more important, one day can make such a big difference in the way that you are structuring your game plan for tomorrow. Now, again, we still know the levels for uh, the downside. The key is they never got there. More important is we didn't anticipate, like we talked about before, and now we're looking on the bullish side. And this is exactly what we talk about on every single video. Don't be tied into a corner. Don't be tied into an opinion. The market's fluid. The market moves around. You have so many different variables for the market to go from up to down to down to up and vice versa. And this is a type of situation. Can earnings be a catalyst for the next leg up? We're hoping so. Right? You know, beta, the beta game has been dead for such a long periods of time. But slowly but surely, and this is, again, only one day, but slowly but surely, they're starting to wake up. Docu, again, got rejected at supply, but maybe it starts reclaiming the levels here. Uh, TDOC, another member of the stay-at-home group, again, Again, maybe not for tomorrow, but at least you're getting some semblance of hope from these things to kind of wake up and start taking out this whole air and juice. Uh, banks, right, were very, very strong. Goldman had a big, big run. They reported earnings. They got sold. Uh, JP Morgan, again, the, the banks were been on fire. And, and, and if there's rotation out of money flow, out of financials into, into technology, I think all of us will definitely sign up for it. The key right now is to sustain some sort of some sort of traction in these names. Now, again, Zoom, Google, Docu, TDOC, they're, they're on the cusp. They're not there yet. But the key is for Netflix to hold up, right? Netflix after hours is absolutely exploding, as you see here, 561. Is it going to start taking out the October 14th highs? Maybe. I mean, that's probably not where the value is. Maybe on dips uh, into rising 60-minute support. But the key is now for all the dead money to finally wake up. Apple, again, holding the bottom range here. It doesn't really scream like it's going higher. But again, baby steps, right? You have to believe in something. Microsoft held the bottom of the range. We talked about this on the weekend uh, video, held this 212 level five times. Guess what? It held it again today. Baby steps. Maybe it starts re, you know, reclaiming uh, this 10-day moving average. So, you know, going into tomorrow's session, I, beta is still not out of the woods. Again, there's some, some names I really do like, but I think there are going to be a bunch of names that are non-beta that look pretty, pretty good. Uh, this WWR had a pretty big run. Maybe he gets a, a day two, any washout on the 60-minute channel, maybe red to green above today's uh, highs as well. A uh, bunch of SPACs woke up today. Cules of the world. Maybe it starts reclaiming today's highs. The Savas of the world, right, had a big, big run uh, three, four days ago, reclaimed the Maybe, again, if it starts reclaiming about this $14 level, maybe it'll go higher as well. So remember, folks, and, and this is especially for the new traders, I'm wrong every day. Remember that. Whether it's on a premise, you're going to be wrong. If you're going to be thin-skinned and you, you're there strictly to be right and look for the shares and the likes and the favorites and, and, and the retweets, you're in the wrong business, okay? You're going to be wrong a lot. The key is don't be wrong financially. Don't be pigheaded. Don't be a mule that if you're seeing price action, the complete opposite of what you think is going to happen, don't just sit there and say, well, I'm going to wait it out. I'm going to let this all play out. No, you're going to go bankrupt. The key is have an opinion, yes. Uh, have a bias, yes. But that if that bias quickly changes and price action tells you we're going to go the opposite way and levels start reclaiming, you have to be an adult about it and go right with it. So guys, have a great night, everybody. Oh, wait, I'm sorry about that. Didn't share the pivots. 
Uh, we didn't talk about the pivots yet. I apologize. So if you look at today's pivots, I apologize. I was way ahead of myself. If you look at today's pivots, it kind of played out. We talked about over the weekend. Uh, you had stocks that were not beta, the BCRXs of the world, the ACORs of the world, the SGENs of the world. They did it very, very well today. The names like NVIDIA that we were watching, NTES, Amazon, uh, so forth and so on, they held their channels. So again, bullish sentiment going into tomorrow. So let's talk about some of the pivots uh, for today. Uh, BCRX was my first trade of the day. Uh, $9 got rejected twice, needs to build. Again, not a big move at all. Really not a big move, but, but, but what's considered a big move these days on a, you know, on a seven, eight, nine dollar stock? You take away 2021 20, price action. Is a 30, 30, 20, 30, 40 cent move big on a nine dollar stock? I, I don't know, right? But again, it's a pretty decent scalp. Uh, it traded up to the 935 area. A little di disappointed that it didn't go more, but this was definitely uh, the highest close in this whole formation. Uh, NVIDIA obviously traded right to that 513 level and bounced. Perfect, uh, perfect hold of the range again. Uh, laser, not a big move. Uh, 30 held three times if bills below can flush. Right, here's laser. It took out that $30. Uh, traded down to like 29.50. Again, this is the lowest close in this whole formation. Maybe it still goes lower. Um, so we have to keep an, actually keep an eye on that for tomorrow. Uh, ACOR was huge. Uh, we we kind of covered this a little bit on the video. ACOR uh, 720-730 needs to build. And this is a, another case of non-beta speculation money rolling in. It took out uh, the 720-730 and it went to 840. Huge, huge move on uh, ACOR. Uh, Seattle Genomics 18675 187 needs to build here was Seattle genomics right traded all the way up to the one almost 191 area uh, and TS never got down to the 103 area and this was kind of my and these were kind of my notes uh, for all you guys in the Twitter feed um, stay patient I really don't like anything here at the open we're waiting for these channels most, most likely I'm gonna start my day at 10 o'clock um, ironically I started my day below 10 o'clock before 10 o'clock on BCRX but but that was kind of the thing I wanted to give sell bias every opportunity to work and it just they just couldn't confirm uh, Friday's levels uh, Apple held 126.20, 126, and held that range again. Uh, Peloton got killed. Congratulations for all you guys who did catch Peloton. They got uh, rejected today. Uh, 153.50, 153. If it builds below, can flush more. Uh, 150's potential, and here was Peloton. You can see here it held. It held here. You see this three, four times in a row. One, two, three, four, five times, right? Five times it held 153.50. At the open just got absolutely murdered. Uh, went all the way down to 144. If you did catch that, great job there. Uh, BCRX take on the way up. Uh, Peloton got smashed. Uh, TTO, I still like, never got there. A nice spike on ACOR. Uh, XPAV, I still like a lot. Uh, laser, new lows. So that was basically it. Also, we caught a nice little trade here. I caught a nice little trade after hours on uh, COCP. I'm actually still holding a little bit as I'm, as I'm recording here. Uh, here are the plays here. 220s potential high. Went into the 230s. I'm still holding some. Hopefully, the stock can uh, rip up uh, to the day's high here. So that's it. You know, that's it, everybody. So I think tomorrow uh, is going to be a very important day. Obviously, the 46th president of the United States is being sworn in. Uh, the key is hopefully the event will go nice and smooth. Uh, there's a lot of uh, there's going to be a lot of, um, you know, a lot of uh, military presence. Uh, there's going to be a lot of people with guns. So if you are watching this broadcast and you're thinking about going to Washington tomorrow, think again. Guys, stay safe. God bless. I love you all. and I'll talk to you all tomorrow.